Let's -a go! What's up, everybody? Welcome to the House of Mario, episode 13. I'm your host, Drew Agnew, and joining me, as always, is Bryce DeWitt. What's up, everybody? Uh, today on the show, we've, we're uh, talking a lot about Gamescom news and some uh, interesting eShop games on the Nintendo eShop. But first, Bryce, I want to know what you've been playing, what you've been up to. We haven't seen you in two weeks. We unfortunately missed um, last week's episode, but you get that? Yep. Yep. But <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, okay. So, I've I've been reinvesting some time into Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. Uh, in anticipation, especially with all the news for number three coming out, um, I decided to go and pick up the 1.5, 2.5 HD collection. I've been revisiting how clunky Kingdom Hearts 1 is, <laughs> and uh, I, I just finished it yesterday, and I'm on to uh, Rechain of Memories, and I'm already hating it because card systems are annoying. All right. And uh, is, that, is that the PSP one originally? No, it was no. originally on the GBA. Oh, what does that look like on PS4? What have they done? It, it was it was remade for PS2. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was remade for PS2 called Rechain of Memories. Yeah. Um, mm. It has some important story details in it, which I suppose they, which is why they went and redesigned it and made it onto PS2. But like, it has this really awkward card system gameplay, and it's not very fun. Oh. I, I'm I'm really not <laughs> enjoying it because you have to be really patient instead of like well you have to be patient and you have to know how how the game works to correctly get everything like just as you want it yeah. and I don't enjoy that I kind of just want to play Kingdom Hearts as it usually is I don't know why they didn't do that in the first place when they decided to remake the game yeah because it has it, it's got important story stuff there but you're gonna play through this really crappy card game mechanic. If if you don't enjoy it, you're not gonna enjoy the game at all. So, is that the only um, game in the collection you've uh, dabbled in? Well, like I said, I finished number one. Um, oh, yeah. yep. The other two games in the collection are two and um, Birth by Sleep. I finished one story in Birth by Sleep, and I finished number two. But going back through all of them again, just so. Uh, it's waving the joy con around. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Um, yeah, I'm going through all of them again just so I can sort of have a bit of a refresher and yep. I'll work my way up. That's that's been my last two weeks. What about you? Um, t today I've been playing um Uncharted Lost Legacy, which is like a which is the DLC which came out, but it's sort of it's not really DS DLC anymore. It's more of its own game. It's, right. Just spending a couple of hours on that. Got up to chapter four, and chapter four is like a pretty much like an open world where you go around and explore and you can um you gotta like take these temples down okay i've only done one at the moment but yeah it's good fun so far it's more uncharted yeah yeah and uh last week i was playing i've only played it once on stream which is sonic mania and <laughs> i suck at sonic so bad <laughs> i was so embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> to be honest like it's really not a good idea to jump into that um first time on stream because i was really bad at it <laughs> yeah uh, well, because I've sort of dabbled in Sonic before, but um, well, I, I not tuned, that much. I tuned into you playing it on stream, and you got stuck on a uh, chemical Ugh. plant zone. So the thing is, with the chemical plant zone, is it's it's pretty infamous for those kind of deaths that you were taking. Oh, just just like you sort of like Sonic's jumps up, bloop, like so yeah, floaty, in, and you just like in the get, water. In, yeah, no, it wasn't even the water. It was um on the platforms, and the platforms were uh, squashing me. Uh, yeah, no, that was in the water. Was it? Yep. That bit was, was it? Yep. I, can't, I can't remember, sorry, but yeah. Yeah, it definitely was, because you drowned, you drowned death once. Oh, yeah, the uh, the purple going up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's kind of infinite, infamous for that kind of thing to happen on Chemical Plant, so it's not... Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but it's, um, there's a lot of um, really cool homages to old Sonic in there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure each, each uh, world is comprised of like an older stage and then a remix stage. I think it's all remixed. I don't know if there's any just like well, straight... Well, I mean, Green Hill Zone wasn't. Wasn't it? The first Green Hill Zone wasn't. I know that much. Okay. 
Yep. I'm not, I'm not mm. too sure beyond that because I don't actually own it yet. Yeah. So. I was really impressed with like the second boss fight, which is um Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Yep. Like, like the game. And I was like, holy crap, this is cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's basically Dr. Mario. Yeah. 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 It was Piro Piro. Well, yeah, Puro Puro. Yeah, however you pronounce it. Always. <laughs> Puro Puro Tetris. Thank God I played that game earlier because I actually knew how to do the boss. I'm like, oh, thank God. I know it's, I know it's not that hard a concept, but... No, no. But, yeah. But it leaves very little explanation at the start. It kind of just throws you in there. I know enough to be um, to do it, but not to be good. Yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> I was playing I was playing online um, Tetris and the other, the, the other Japanese player was um, doing Puro Puro and he <laughs> absolutely kicked my ass. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Uh, well, you been playing anything else? Uh, not really, apart from my usual. My usual generally just consists of more grinding on Final Fantasy fourteen and then just jump into a match of Overwatch every now and again. And yeah, been um, playing any Splatoon? I haven't actually turned my Switch on for about a week and a half. Mm. I think I I um, needed a little break from the Splatoon spam, uh, so I've taken that. I'll probably get back into it soon enough. Uh, I've turned on Zelda a couple times, but apart from that, I've yeah not really touched it the past couple of weeks just to take a break. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I've been playing the PlayStation a little bit more. Yep. the last couple of weeks here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Do you want to jump to the Gamescom news? Yeah. Sure. We don't typically cover um really just shitloads of news in our podcast, but uh, when there's a big event on or lots of information coming from Nintendo, we usually jump into it. Because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of small interesting things, nothing too, um, nothing too much, but a lot of small things. Most of it, I feel, is just uh, update news for most games that are already out. Yeah, that's what Gamescom generally tends to be. Just yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they uh, we won't go too far into it now, but like the Final Fantasy 15, like mm. big old whatever they called it universe thing universe x or something there was like a big massive like six or seven. Oh well let's jump straight into that then we may as well we're talking about it okay you know more about um the final fantasy 15 universe than me so you you uh kick okay. it off okay so um at gamescom they, this is kind of a hot topic at the moment as well because they dropped a bunch of uh hit, hints for switch content but um, they're like they did with Final Fantasy VII, 10 to a degree, thirteen to a degree. They're trying to really turn it into its own sort of mini universe. Yeah. So um, there's you know spin-off games, different versions of games. You know you've already got some of that stuff. There's a mobile mobile like uh, Age of Empires type thing with the uh, Final Fantasy and New Empire. Mm. Uh, <laughs> You know, all this nice stuff. But they announced some really big things for Final Fantasy XV. Um, which, uh, they also dropped some hints that something something will come to Switch. Uh, they were talking at a panel and they said something like, Oh, players want to hear something about uh, the something that sounds like you, you guys' you guys's name. Yeah, Twitch? Uh, yeah, you know, some really corny... Uh, drop but um, <laughs> they went they went on about it um, but there was some big things for like full reveal already there that was um, crazy like uh, Windows 10 version yeah I say that it's huge as well fuck that <laughs> mod support and like NVIDIA NVIDIA engine enhancements and just all the DLC is free so is that available on Steam? I would say so. Yeah, I'm okay. pretty sure. Like, I'm pretty sure it'll be. Oh yeah, it's Steam and Origin. Origin. Hmm. I don't know why. Origin. Why? I don't know why. Well, EA's Origin. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I'd read. So, huh. Yeah. Huh. What? I don't know. I guess I just want it on as available as many platforms as possible. Yeah. I guess why not? Yeah. It's the same. It's sort of the same thing. Like with Destiny Two, they're like, oh, it's not going on Steam. It's going on Battle.net. <laughs> You know, yeah, and, that makes sense though, because that's Blizzard. Whereas well, this is well, just I know, but my, my my point is is that they're just introducing it to a platform. Oh, yeah, and it, kind of just yeah. like, well, it yeah. won't won't hurt. I I just didn't know EA was like to other publishers put your games on now. 
mm. service, but yeah, no, I don't know. There you go. I don't know if that's the case, then that's the case. But you know, that's what I'd read. I can't guarantee that that's the case. Um, but so, so what's this pocket edition? Because I actually don't know what it's really about. Pocket edition? Okay. Final so, Fantasy Fifteen. Yeah. Uh, you have. I, I I would assume that you have at least dabbled in the uh, DS remakes of all the Final Fantasies. Yeah, and I had them on um, iPod Touch and that too. Basically the same thing. Same thing. Except yeah. it's a downgrade. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, it's episodic as well, isn't it? I, is it? I think it was. It was 10 episodes. 10 episodes? That seems really silly. Um, I don't know. I haven't read much into it because I'm kind of just like, well, I mean, I've, I've played through the game and I've got the season pass and... I'll probably yeah. buy it on Windows again anyway. I'm like, I don't see what the point is. It's playing a pocket edition. Um, not really much point to me. Mm. Um, because it's not... I, I like sincerely doubt it's going to be this big old open world thing. I'm going to say it's very, very linear. Yeah. So, um, I guess it's just a way of giving the story to other people. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like... Make, not... the, make their money back after they spent 10 years <laughs> just yeah <laughs> on developing development time yeah. I, I'm sure there will be people that will enjoy the pocket edition for the story and all that but you know to be honest guys just just play the full thing it's really cheap you get it for like 40 bucks yeah yeah that's really cheap yeah and it's a it's in my opinion it is a solid game not everybody thought so to begin with not because of game mechanics but because of story reasons which I won't go into yeah but um you know that's stuff that they've already addressed and they said it'll be fixed up by the time the DLC ends like the DLC lineup completely mm. ends so you know there's not a lot of wondering and waiting there well plenty of waiting obviously but not a lot of wondering there they're going to do yeah. something about that anyway but by the time that comes out if you're interested and you've got a good PC uh, all the DLC will be available for free which means you get every single piece of story and stuff like that yeah. so um, that'd be the best time to play it if you don't want to invest on it on console, which will only be forty bucks. So, mm. so I'm just waiting for the game of the year edition to come to PS4. I'll uh, play it that way. Yeah, no, probably be probably probably be a smart sense. Mm. Um, but it would, it was a big, in my opinion, it was big for them at Gamescom because they were just like, Here, here's here's this edition and that edition, and like Windows looks really pretty. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be an awesome way to play the game especially with the mod support the mod support's going to be crazy uh, we got the multiplayer mode comrades coming mm. which uh, looks fun so okay. yeah I haven't said anything on it uh, apart there was, from this there was a beta from, for it the other day apart from this Switch news where the, they basically asked whether the pocket edition will be coming to Switch and they said uh, there is certainly a chance it's certainly not zero so <laughs> You know, that's that's something. I mean, yeah, it'd be good. It'd be good for again. It'd be good for people that you know have a mm. switch and can't get their hands on. They went on to talk about as well how the um, the mobile version obviously doesn't have any like controller support. So that they're saying basically, if it comes to switch, it'll be undocked only. Yeah, yeah. But you, you'd think they'll just go into it and put controller support with it. It wouldn't be that hard, you would think. But you know, I'm not. Because that's like like if it, if it's a touchscreen game where like you can't can't work your way around it like you know those rhythm games and stuff like that that's fair enough but if 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 there's a way to make it controllable on the TV make sure you make it controllable well yeah absolutely like <laughs> I mean most people want to play it on their TV regardless mm. of whether it's the actual thing or whether it's pocket edition I mm. would imagine so because the, these games like a game like when I was thinking about Severed which is on the Switch and um iPad and that you're better off just playing on an iPad because it's the same you're playing it the same way yeah and it's probably cheaper it's a lot cheaper yeah well there you go it lo- Severed launched for 10 bucks on iOS mm-hmm. and it's 20 bucks on Switch yeah so it's double the price yeah and I got it I got it for um, 2 bucks because yeah. it was on, on special yep you know that that's just expectations on iOS platforms I think for pricing but yeah it's worth 20 bucks mind you don't if you're interested don't um yeah, that. don't don't be deterred. Yeah. Like, if you don't have an iPad, there's no reason for you to not pick yeah. it up if you're interested. So yeah, that's uh, might be getting the mobile version of Final Fantasy 15. Who knows? Well, I don't know. I'd, either way, either way, it's not going to bother me. I've, I've got a console there to play the actual Final Fantasy. 15. Yeah, that's that's right. I, I think I'll just not bother and I'll just get the you know proper game. All right, 
all right excuse for Switch players to play the story, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, hey. Yeah. Um, Splatoon 2 is getting an update, and it's already got some of that content. It's getting a new uh, map, uh, Manta uh, Marina, which is like a, a boat, pretty much, you're on. I, right. Um, I tried to play it earlier, but it just wouldn't um, put me into it. So I'm like, all right, all right, well, <laughs> won't worry about it. And it's uh, getting a new Salmon Run uh, level two called uh, Lost Outpost. So that's good. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we, we get multiplayer maps like here and there. We'll, we, we will be getting them here and there like all the time, but Salmon Run maps, obviously, they're going to come a lot scarcer. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's uh, come out yet, um, um, but when I watched the trailer and it sort of, you know, it looks similar because it's like the drab sort of yeah brownie looking level but it looks yeah because to get more is it only the two levels then because it was originally just one yeah currently yeah. there is only two levels yeah yeah so there's a yeah a rotation yep now of them and the new weapon is coming out uh september 1st first called the bubble blower which sort of um you blow a bubble and it floats out and you can your team can shoot it with that your own paint and it sort of blows up or you can throw it out and it um acts as like a defense shield yeah, right. So it's kind of like the it's kind of in the same category as a splat brawler. Mm. So you you definitely need uh, a team that uh, can communicate. That can communicate. Yeah. Which um, when you go into just normal, like a normal battle, it might be a bit difficult to actually work it work it out because a lot of people just go in with the rollers, roll around, splatter shot. It's pretty basic. So I think it'd be really good for splat zones and competitive. Mm. because like regardless of what you're doing uh you're going to be blowing bubbles onto that thing and your team's going to be firing towards the splat zone anyway so yeah. they might as well pop your bubbles get some extra ink down sort of thing yeah it'd be, in- it'd be interesting to see all these weapons how they're used by like the people who know what they're doing well yeah, yeah. of course you know and the time will tell yeah absolutely and arms is getting a new uh dlc too lollipop Go- yeah lollipop yeah. she's she's a big inflatable clown <laughs> What what do you think? What did, what did you think when you first watched the trailer? Uh, I only watched like a short version of the trailer. Right, I watched one. It's about a minute and a half. Yeah, I only watched yeah. the thirty second one. So I don't know too much about it. All I know is that she inflates and she takes less damage or something. Yeah. So what what she does is she basically inflates and that's her shield. Yep. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, she's a pretty bulky character. And she's, right. She's got um. She brings new weapons. I don't know what they're exactly called, but they're just nunchucks, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That looked pretty cool. Yeah, I saw them. And, and she's yeah. got um shields and something else. I can't remember now. That's a shame, isn't it? Very much a <laughs> block and whack character then. Yeah. Yeah. And she's got a new a new stage come with her. And it's like a there's it's not just like a flat stage like a lot of the others. Like um it's like a, it zigzags. So you can easily sort of it looks like it's made to suit her playstyle where you're actually trying to push your opponents into like corners gotcha and like you just like turn into your big fat clown self and <laughs> block, <laughs> block them in yep mm. I've been playing a fair bit of arms lately because it's a, a lot of fun and uh, people on Twitch they haven't been no, no one's streaming it so quite often I jump on them oh well no one else is streaming it I might you know. yeah, play some arms get some viewers <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah because Splatoon is just like eating it all oh of course it has yeah. because again I'm pretty sure I mentioned... Oh, no, I mentioned this during your stream. Um, it is very much uh, the competitive takeover, which ARMS is supposed to be, uh, you know, on that same level, but it's never going to be on that same level because it's going to compete with Splatoon. <laughs> yeah. And Splatoon is already cemented, and anybody that's interested in Splatoon already is going to go play Splatoon because they're not interested in learning a new game from head to toe. Just with arms, I really wish they did like a lobby like they did with Splatoon, where you can actually run around it. If you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just it's just menu all menu based. It's all a bit Yeah it's lifeless. A little bit, yeah. But I mean the same could be said for anything like you think about Smash and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. I guess. You know, it's it's the same but thing. I the guess... only reason it's excusable in Smash is because Smash has so many characters and Well it's... Smash just has so much content, arms. Arms does not. Yeah. Doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Arms has Arms has a scarce amount of content. Fun game, but like, I mean, what have you got outside of multiplayer? You got arcade mode, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in multiplayer, you've got plenty of multiplayer opportunities, 
Just not enough single player stuff. Mm, I really want to go deep into that story. Why everyone's got extendable arms, <laughs> and not and not just the stuff in the direct where they're like, they woke up one day and they had extendable arms and they wanted yeah. to fight. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what they said. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much just a jab of who the fuck cares why. Yeah, pretty much because <laughs> you know it's not it's not that important, is it? Ah, well, you know, they have extendable arms and you want to punch things. That's that's the moral of the story. That is the moral of the story. Yep. All right, next item. We've got Rocket League. Uh, three new um, cars were announced. So basically, there's a Mario and Luigi, which um, look like, yes, you know, what you would expect out of a Mario and Luigi car. And the Metroid one. And the Metroid one, which uh, pretty much looks like Samus' ship from Prime. Yep. Which looks awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's even got, like, the same boost. Yes, it does. <laughs> Which is pretty cool, yeah. Actually, going on to that topic, though, my curiosity is, is and I'm pretty sure we talked about this on the show, um, we were we were talking about, it's like, oh, we're going to have, like, a Mario hat for, like, a flag or yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Or whatever, and then we're kind of just like, uh, what's how's that going to work for, you know, like, when you're viewing it on other consoles? Is that going to be, like, a thing, or is it just going to have, like, a default flag or whatever? How are they going to handle that with cars? I don't know. <laughs> That's going to be really difficult. <laughs> I don't think... I, I, maybe the Xbox and um, PC can just see it. Maybe. I assume so. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I guess I guess we'll see. Like, it's, it just seems really strange, though, mm. because that means that content's going to be implemented into the coding of games on other platforms. I guess, yeah. So... They can hack it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, but like it's just curious to see how that's going to work out because it is yeah. Nintendo's property, and that Nintendo property is going to end up on Xbox, and it's going to end up on uh, PC. Mm. It'd, be, so, it'd be cool to see. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping it just means that like they're going to be like they're going to be like, hey, here's the assets, just lend it, and like we we start to see like more of a thing. There was a news article regarding in similar stuff like that the other day about. Uh, Microsoft saying yes they're still in talks with Sony on trying to get them to <laughs> cross the barrier but you know obviously. They're, they're not going to like PlayStation has no reason to do that <sighs> well they have a reason for fans yeah I know because but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the more they keep doing what they're doing PlayStation's just gonna uh, gonna end up my um, single player experience console in, in that case which I don't think they want no, but you know when when you're stunting yourself really hard like that, you, what other choice do you have? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, a lot more of FIFA 18 on Switch was shown, and uh, it looks pretty good. It looks um, pretty decent. Um, the I just want to bring up the like once again the journey isn't on on the Switch version and. Uh, like from from what I've seen from the Madden, like story mode and the like the actual uh, whatever they're calling it on FIFA 18 Journey 2 or whatever, it yeah. look, they, they look really good, mm-hmm. and the press has been really impressed with Madden's. It's like a a Telltale series put into Madden, pretty much. Right, gotcha. And there's not actually that much gameplay, like Madden gameplay in in it. It's all about making decisions and all that stuff. It looks it looks really impressive, and yeah, it's a shame it's not on Switch. Mm, well, you know, I don't. I don't know why they wouldn't do it anyway. Mm. It, it's just for whatever reason they're like, "Hey, look, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be putting this in there," and then it's just kind of like comes back to the same thing we've always been talking about, and that's like if if you're gonna give us a game, give it in its full content and give us like a very solid reason if you have to miss out on something. But there really is no reason for this, yeah. is there? Like. I've got to decide pretty much. Like I want it on Switch. I want it to um, take it around with me, play, uh, take off the Joy Cons, play with my friends. But I want that story mode. So I've got to decide. You know, which w- what platform I get it on. I would say, I would say, if you think you're going to play it with friends wherever you go or whatever, and you think you're going to do that to a decent degree, mm. get it on Switch and then pick up a cheap copy of the PS4 version later or something if you're really that concerned about Journey. But, like, again, this this whole thing would have been resolved if they had just put Journey on the Switch. Yeah. What is, what is, what is the issue? Like, I'm not, I don't I'm, think it was a time issue either because this has been announced for a while. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be a time issue. They're just... For whatever reason, I suppose, maybe... 
Well, maybe, maybe with the Journey version, they were like really trying to get that like the graphical uh, presentation up, and maybe they couldn't get it go on Switch without. But it was easier to get the actual, you know, but, gameplay. I don't know. I mean, that that comes back to the same general argument as if you can. That, that's something that came up actually uh, with Fire Emblem Warriors today. Um, you have the option to lower the resolution in game on the Switch if you want a better frame rate. In right. that game. In the game. Right. Yeah. You are. You can do that. Mm. Um, on the fly, it doesn't matter. So why isn't that a thing for other games that are always like, oh, graphical issues and. Why Why is that an issue? If they can do something like that to a game, and this is Koei Tecmo we're talking about, like, it's not like friggin' multi-billion friggin' third-party champion lord of... God... I don't know. <laughs> you get my point. <laughs> like, if, if a smaller company like Koei can do that in comparison to something like EA or Activision, then why aren't EA and Activision doing it? It must be a very small penny they're saving by doing that. Which is Mm. the frustrating thing about Journey Mode, because if it is a graphical thing, then they're making it a very cheap reason as to why it's not there. Well, EA has gone on record basically saying, like, FIFA 18 on Switch is going to be their sort of test bet. See if they like start making and porting other games for the Switch. This is not a good test bed. No, because this is this is a very This is giving people a reason who have multiple consoles to buy it on a different console. Well yeah, exactly. Like it, it this is a game which is everywhere. So people who have Switch have a lot of places to buy it. Yep. People are gonna come down to a decision like I'm gonna come down to and a lot are gonna be like, Okay, I want I want, you know, the one with all the features, which yeah. which is fair enough. I don't particularly care about having it in a handheld. They're going to get it on the PS4, and also like um, sort of people, Nintendo fans are sort of they catered not to be playing this type of game because a lot of these games have been pretty ordinarily ported mm-hmm. to Nintendo consoles in the like past. Yep, they just don't. Mm. They don't. They don't think with their goddamn heads. But just talking about EA, I want to jump to this one here, Bryce, because I was I was surprised when uh, this got announced. So basically, a game, a little game called Fee, is it Fay? I think it's Fay. F E. Uh, I don't know if it's accented or not because you haven't read it with the accent. Oh, so. well. I think it's Fay. I'm going to say Fay. If I'm wrong, well, gotcha. Santa bloody hit me into my house. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an EA original game. So it's one of these games which is like an indie game being published by EA. And this is the type of game that really sort of like caters a lot more to a Nintendo fan. Right. I think it's been described as a... So, have you seen it? Have no. you seen the art style? So, this is what the art style is like. I did see the name, I did see the name title uh, floating around, but yeah. So, this this is an um, article on IGN. They describe it as a um, an adventure with Zelda-like discovery. So, you know, right, right off the bat, that's a, a game that's going to appeal more to a Nintendo fan. Right. Yep. And it's like really artsy looking. So that it really like it really grabbed my attention. I think it will grab a lot of people's attention. This is also on Xbox One and PS4. Of course. So it's it's not I just can never see EA any ever releasing anything exclusive to the to the Switch or any other Nintendo console. Oh no, which is fair enough, but uh but yeah. Um no, I don't know. I'll have to look into it. Um it's you know, it's stuff like that that would be, you know, good for EA, I suppose. But yeah, again, yeah, going going back to their main titles, if you if you're gonna go ahead and put something on the Switch, please EA. I know you're never gonna listen to this goddamn podcast, but <laughs> yeah, you're not EA, the company, the whole company, the whole company's there. just sitting there like, God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> there's a there's a speaker. We don't have the approval of two Australians. <laughs> there's a speaker going throughout the whole like. Every single studio is like, what the fuck is this shit playing? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah... Um, worse than that Taylor Swift song. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, uh, yeah, if, they, if they're really seriously considering Switch as a platform, they need, to, they need to do a better job. Otherwise, you know, the people that do own several different consoles in their home are going to pick the one with the better features. Mm. And they've already stunted it by making it worse than the two editions that are coming. Like stunted it pretty hard, <laughs> yeah. Um, but hopefully, games like FE showed them. 
I'm just not sure. Like, it's it's hard to know whether who's responsible. Whether it's EA just being like, okay, we're not going to put all our effort into this one until this one sells, and we'll put more effort into next year's. And that's what I think they're doing. But or, then they never release the second thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They did. They've done the same with the a lot of other platforms. They've done the same with the PlayStation Vita, for example. Yeah, of course. That's like Madden, FIFA, all that. Um, the whole thing about the PS Vita, especially when it first came out, was cross-play with PS3. Right. So a lot of people, a lot of PlayStation gamers were like, okay, I want to be able to transfer my save to the Vita, take it with me, play some games, come back to my PS3. You know, pretty much what you're doing with the Switch and stuff now. Right. But, of, of course, the Vita version was that bare bones, and every year it was just a roster update. It wasn't... Ugh. Like, there was literally no change. No change, just a roster update. Jesus. And that was resold. Yeah, and like that. And wow. Well, the the 3ds version of FIFA also did the same thing for a couple of years, just roster updates, no oh, gameplay changes. Wow. So and but, but they wonder why that doesn't sell. <laughs> because like we, we've already had this discussion on the podcast before, but uh, we could go on and on about this subject. I think we're both very much in the same boat of like stop being skimpy. But like, especially from my point of view, where I actually enjoy FIFA, like you don't you don't play it necessarily, but you just want to see the. You know, the I just the I just want to see them treat. Well. Yeah, I yeah. want to see them treat it right because they they're like oh you know you you see arrogant articles from them <laughs> saying like fucking oh the Wii U is not working for us and then it's just like because you released a stumped copy of Vita and a copy of Mass Effect Three. And not ME one or two, which is kind yeah. of integral to playing ME three. Yeah, like I feel so sorry for Mass Effect fans. Ah, uh, yeah, they're going through a bit of a shit storm at the es- moment. Especially like Zelda came out, we're so happy with Zelda. Then Horizon came out, and everyone was stoked about Horizon. Then they brought out Mass Effect, and it's like, oh, it's not that, it's not hitting that well, guys. It's like, oh, that sucks for you guys. Well, the thing is, is the people that liked Andromeda enjoyed it, and it's generally the Mass Effect fan. But unfortunately. Uh, there's a lot of people that see Mass Effect Andromeda who are fans of Mass Effect and they're just like, oh, no, it's fine. But everybody everybody who is interested in playing Andromeda but isn't necessarily the biggest Mass Effect fan is sitting there looking at it like, holy crap, what did they do to this game? Mm. Because, like... I was, I was going to jump in with this game too. Yeah, I was interested in playing Andromeda because I'm not interested in playing 1, 2, and 3 that much. Yeah. Three's multiplayer was fun. Uh, I played a little bit of Mass Effect Two, but again, like Mass Effect One is until Andromeda the worst in the series to play because it's quite boring. Mm. So moving on to Mass Effect Two and Mass Effect Three, Mass <laughs> Effect Two was like, hey, this is the best one in the series. Mass Effect Three was like, everybody was raging about the ending. Mm. So just talking about Mass Effect, it's like when they put it on Wii U, Mass Effect Three, when there's no <laughs> other. Mass Effects to go off of, and no wonder uh, that the matter. You can buy it for four dollars now. <laughs> yeah, notice that. That's how that's how much it's worth. It just, yeah, just just coming from that cycle, it's kind of just like I was excited for Andromeda because it looked kind of cool. Yeah, but it just really turned. Into- All right, enough EA trash talking. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to Need, Need for Speed and Star Wars this year. So you get my money anyway <laughs> <laughs> for two things <laughs> and FIFA. I'll get one of the FIFA. Three things. Yeah, see, three things. That's a lot, though. That's a lot. Yeah, but. I enjoy Titanfall as well. <laughs> don't, don't kill I me. just never spend money on EA again if I could. <laughs> I won't lie. Until they until they up their business practice, I'm not very interested in them, in them at all. Like mm. I'm, the, the, the latest thing I bought from them is Titanfall two. And I don't think I've bought anything else since. Oh, they're no Warner Brothers, though. Huh? No Warner Brothers. I think they're the. Oh well, the pinnacle of. Let's yeah. get the money out of the customers. Well, of course they are. You know, that's 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 generally what happens. Kingdom Hearts again. I was talking about it at the start of the show. That's already a perfect example of how much they want to shelve a series. They're like, hey, Square, we want you to put out this game on mobile platforms. We want you to put a second one out on mobile platforms. We want you to put one out on NDS, 3DS, PS Vita, PSP. Well, not PS Vita, but PSP, PS3, PS2. PS4, it goes on and on. It goes on and on. You have to own so much shit 
to play Kingdom Hearts and you pretty much need to know all of it. Yeah. And like, <laughs> so you need to play all of it. So you need to own all these consoles. But with these with these collections on PS4, it's not necessary to own so much stupid crap anymore. Yeah, so much stuff from like multiple companies as well. It's not even just like all the Playstations or all the Nintendo systems. <laughs> like, yeah. But if you have an Xbox, you just get Kingdom Hearts 3. You're like, sweet. Let's, let's, let's get into this little sucker. Yeah. What's yeah. going on here? The Heartless? Or, uh, uh, what's the Heartless? <laughs> who's this bloody duck? <laughs> who's this? <laughs> Is this Daffy? <laughs> well, back to, back to Nintendo shit. <laughs> uh, Telltale's announced that uh, the Batman Season 1 and Guardians of the Galaxy are coming to Switch. I did see this, and I like Telltale, ga- I'd like Telltale games, but I haven't heard great things about those two games. Batman I've heard good things about. Um, okay. Guardians of the Galaxy. I was like, oh, cool. I like the movie. I like Telltale Games. I go and have a look on the PlayStation Store. Right. And the trailer starts. I'm like, this looks really bad. <laughs> I don't like the story. Could be amazing. Like, I don't, I don't want to say anything, but you know how there's usually like an artistic, like comic like um, art style. Yeah. This was yeah. just like a 3D animation, like really ordinary mm, looking. That's not fun. Like if if our, if anyone listening has played it and it's a good game, you know, by, yeah. by, I, haven't, I haven't played it. But. Feel free to tell us. Yeah. yeah, but like, but Batman looks. I've heard just really good things about Batman. I I didn't hear great things about the first episode, and that was the last I ever heard of it. Mm. So I think all, like all every single first episode of the seasons, everyone's like, yeah, it was okay. But I think that's just slow, like slowly building it up. Oh, I wouldn't say that about getting every, into it. I wouldn't say that about every one of their games. Because I, I remember listening to reviews for The Walking Dead for season season one, episode one. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I didn't really enjoy it that much. But it's just like, like it's, yeah. And then it's, as it went on, it just went. It's, it's just the episode where it introduces you to everything and it's sort of like, oh yeah, yeah. Getting your grips with the world, the characters. All yeah, that thing. I guess. Mm. I don't know. I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed, um, the only two tell, tell, uh, Telltale games I've completely played through is the first Walking Dead one and yep. The Wolf Among Us. And I enjoyed both all the way through. So, I don't know. Um, I guess me just hearing about Batman being like, hey, you know, Batman Telltale Games a thing, and then people are just like, eh. I'm just like, okay, eh. Mm. Besides, there's a lot more Batman to play on other things. Yeah. I, I, mean, know it's, I know it's not the same deal, but like, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pick up Batman eventually because it's on sale at the moment. Right. And, uh... Yeah, do you do you think you'll be playing these Telltale games on Switch if you're interested in one? Uh, I mean, if I find one, I'm interested in probably. Like if like, have you been playing The Walking Dead, like season three? I have everything? not. No. <laughs> Neither have I. Um, I, need, I need to play S two first, which I still haven't done. I got halfway uh, through season two, but um, what happened? Oh yeah, I couldn't download the last two episodes. Oh, pa- that's right. I remember that on PS three, and I went back. And I uh, went to download them, and my save disappeared. So I'm all right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> but right. now I've got season two through PlayStation Plus. So now I've got to play it on PlayStation Four. Yeah. So right. It. I'll probably end up just playing them on PlayStation because it's easy. They're easy trophies. I guess so. Yeah. Like yeah. on on Switch, you know, you take a like you know, it's either trophies or taking it with you. And I just feel like you know, you might as just watch it like a movie. Yeah. On your TV. At home. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No, 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 I might buy it. It's good. It's there. Well, I might buy something that I'm interested in if it happens. I'll, I'll love to see a Nintendo partner with te- Telltale. God, what could you do though? I maybe, don't know, but maybe a Metroid drama. That would be probably the most sense. Probably, but you could do something bloody awesome with it. I or think. an F Zero drama. F Zero, yes. <laughs> well, I mean. You know, do you falcon punch or do you not falcon punch? <laughs> you always falcon you punch. Always falcon punch. <laughs> you never not falcon punch. Um, I want that now. Like I want something, that so bad. <laughs> something like that would be cool because those those characters have centric person. Well, I mean, questionable now with Metroid because Metroid and Metroid Other M have uh, you know done some done some awkward things. But you know, um. Ooh. Well, it has yeah yeah, no, you, yeah you can't deny that but like um it, it would be something that's better suited for a dramatization of a story same with f-zero because f-zero like if you've ever played gx i think it was on the gamecube that's got sort of story elements to it um 
I'm pretty sure F-Zero has its own anime uh, thing. Well, it's, it's like what they've done with Borderlands. Like, Borderlands had, like, a, you know, very, you know, run-of-the-mill story. Yeah. And they, they like, made their own characters and really amped up the world. Yeah, yeah. They, they could do that. They could, uh, I don't know, they could do it with Zelda. They could do a Zelda game, but they could, you know, make their own characters and put them, you know, doing whatever. I mean, they probably could, could do it with Zelda. I, I don't think it had ever happened with a Mario game. I don't think they could do it with a Mario game. They could do it, but probably not. No. <laughs> not not to not to something that would keep people interested. They could even do Metroid where they make, uh, you know, a bo- another bounty hunter. Well, Who yeah. Who knows? That's the thing, is something with Metroid would actually work. Again, something something that needs story context is generally the way you want to go. So, Mario doesn't have a lot of that. It usually has a general-centric plot of like, hey, the princess has been kidnapped, go find her. Or, hey, the princess has been kidnapped, jump in painting, paintings, get some stars and go find her. You know, it doesn't really have anything in between. It's kind of just like Bowser banter. Bowser banter. <laughs> well, you know, Mario 64, that's what it is. It's Bowser yeah. banter. So, like... But they, they don't have to copy the games. You know, no, I'm not saying yeah, nothing. But like, what are you gonna mean? Like, it's it's gonna be like a dialogue option. It's gonna be like Luigi. We need to get the pasta. Oh, like, Mamma mia! Really and then it's just like you're playing as Luigi. It's like get the pasta or don't get the pasta. You're like, <laughs> no, you eat the pasta. Mario, eat the pasta. Put the pasta in the bin, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, where do you go with a with a Mario thing like that? Like, it's it's really. I don't know, bro. It's not my job to work at that shit out. <laughs> well, the, the, it's it's oh. your, it's not it's not any of our jobs. But it, as as fans of something that could be, it's our job to sort of try and make an interpretate in interpretate <laughs> interpretation of what they could do for this kind of genre. And I don't think Mario could fit it because when you think about it, it's like what do you, what happens when you make a dramatization of Mario? You get like grungy grungy Mario. Mario's like a mafia boss. I'll play that. I'll play that <laughs> to hell. Yeah, because it'd be kind of like Wolf Among Us. Oh God! It would. It would be like Wolf Among Us. Yeah. It would literally be the pretty much pretty much the same deal. Like, you know, and Nintendo doesn't want that to happen to Mario as a property because Mario is like sensitive kid material, for the most part. Mm. You know, if you if you slap Mario on the title or something and what, then make him a grungy mafia. Wolf. What about a Kid Icarus game? That could be cool. Yeah, they're dialogue heavy. Yeah. Well, Uprising was, so I don't see why it wouldn't work. It's very dialogue heavy. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it could work, but I would rather see something more fruitful out of Kid Icarus than a Telltale game. Mm. You know? But that's resources um, more or less out of Telltale, not Nintendo. Yeah, but still... Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I I like the banter and I like the story in Uprising. I just want anything out of Kid Icarus because I don't know if we'll get anything <laughs> I just, for I a just, long time. I just I just think, like, including Zelda in that list, because when I, was, when I thought about, as we've been talking about it, I thought about it, I was just like, hey, you know, it could work. I mean, you get, like, a gritty Zelda sort of thing and you base, like, a, base like a thing around it. And I don't know, like... It, mm. Zelda has a bit of lore in there you can work with a lot of dialogue options in the series that I think Zelda would be awesome for a Telltale game would be yeah, yeah. Um, now that I think about it that's not so bad but something like Mario wouldn't work in my opinion it's know. just because they don't talk anything that talks would be a bit more simple to do well yeah yeah but um, yeah coming down to it um, with those games you've got a lot there to work with mm-hmm. with Kid Icarus you don't it's kind of just like you've got the one game where he has a bunch of dialogue in it, which is Uprising, which is an awesome game. But I I want to see more of that. So I don't want to see the next thing that comes out is Kid Icarus, the Telltale game. I'd, I, I would <laughs> rather see Kid Icarus Uprising 2. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I Like, I, wa- I want to know more about the centric universe of Kid Icarus. I want to know more about Palutena, the other gods, which Kid, Icar- Kid Icarus Uprising <laughs> did well. Yeah. But I want to see that in an actual full-fledged game and not a Telltale game before I see it in a Telltale game. All right. Fair enough. We'll just take the Zelda one then. Yeah, take the Zelda we'll one. We'll take the Zelda one. Zelda, Zelda one or Metroid one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. See, Metroid would be awesome to sort of expand the lore before Metroid Prime. Oh, yeah. 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 Four, yeah. It'd be really good. 
Um, the SNES, Bryce, that's uh, shown off some more features. It's got a rewind feature and it also has frames where you can uh, decorate the sidebars. So it's not just uh, black like a black box. Yeah, okay. So I did, I did look into this. Um, but again, this is all nice news and stuff like that, but my concern is actually getting one. <laughs> Mm. I've got one pre-ordered. I'm good. I'm good. You got one pre-ordered? Yeah, I got. I got it the day it went out. Shit. Because I I was up at like three o'clock in the morning, and you know it came up. It came up, but EB Games didn't actually refresh their site until nine o'clock. Right. And I was lucky enough to be, you know, not going to work early. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to try and storm Big W the morning it comes out, and just hope mm. it's there. Good luck. I don't mm. know. I don't know if they'll be doing pre-orders. Um, I don't think so. There were they. They already tried to do pre-orders and it failed miserably. <laughs> so yeah. I don't think they're doing them anymore. Those places suck for pre-orders. Oh, the god awful. I remember uh, Target. This wasn't the PlayStation 4 launch, but you know how they're so hard to get and you had to sort of like book in for one, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah, that was a, that was a mess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, well. I mean... I just want to get my hands on one. Then I'll care about the rewind features and the framing features. <laughs> it's like, yeah, cool. Let me just play the bloody thing. <laughs> I want to play all these mm. SNES games that I love so much. They announced a uh, a new 3DS XL um, SNES yeah. edition thing I, too. I saw this. I saw this floating around Facebook. I'm just like, cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks um cool. <laughs> Don't know. I wouldn't buy it. So uh, yeah. how about instead of manufacturing them, you just take the shells of them. <laughs> You stuff in the SNES Classic Edition, uh, you know, hardware, and then you sell that. Mm. You sell that. What do you think of that um, Metroid one? A 3DS. That XL looks Lamers. really cool. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I do want that. I mean, I'm never going to get it, but I do want it. Yeah, it looks it looks really nice. I, ca- I care about that more than I ever would about the 3DS XL uh, SNES Edition. Yeah. Oh yeah, that looks way better and. I'm pretty excited for um, the Metroid game coming for it, 3DS. But, yeah, again, uh, the Switch has just got so much of my money this year. <laughs> yeah, it's got way too much of my money. There's so much coming out at the end of the year. Like, we were just discussing it before the show. In October, there's so much coming out. In just one shebang. We're like, <laughs> we're like under, the, we're under the impression, like, when... You know, they talked about it um, over E3 and, like, just at the pre-launch and stuff like that. And they're just like, oh, there's, there's like, pretty much a major game coming out every month this year. And we're like, cool. And then we'll have, like, eShop games in between that. But then, like, the last couple of weeks, it's like, Fire Emblem Warriors is coming out a week before Mario. <laughs> in the same month, I'm pretty sure Koei Tecmo are releasing three Warriors games for the Switch. In one month, there's five games, and I'm interested in at least four of them. How about, like, just Koei Tecmo? Why are they releasing... Because Koei Tecmo loves Nintendo. Yeah, I know, but why are they putting them all out just boom? Because they're, they're, they're old games. Yeah, I get that. I mean, Dynasty, Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires and Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimate are the ones I care about. Yeah. So, at Gamescom, this got announced too. Like, Fire Emblem Warriors comes out on the 20th of October. Yeah, yeah. Um, comes with a special edition. Does this special edition interest you? Comes with the game, character cards, and a three-disc CD original soundtrack. It does, but God knows that I'm probably not going to buy it. How much is it? How much is it? 120? 100 and th- yeah, 20. 120. Yeah. So it's like forty dollars more expensive. What are these cards? Why do you want? Why do you want oh, Fire Emblem Warriors know. cards? I don't know. I don't know why they package cards with games. They just go down the bin. Yeah, it's, it's the same like, thing when I got the paper. It's like. It's like, what are you going to do with them? You're going to frame them? That's just going to cost you more money. <laughs> frame your cards, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, the soundtrack is cool, but it's not worth forty dollars to me. Yeah. Unfortunately, we live in the digital age where most of this sh- th- this shit can be downloaded or pirated or just streamed or streamed in general. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it'd be cool having a physical collection of it, but at the same time, you know, when when you look at it from an Australian's perspective, it's like, hey, it's an extra forty dollars. I'm just like, um, what do no. you what do you what do you like in special editions? 
What do I like in special editions? Yeah. Definitely not content that's exclusive to special editions. No, that can go and, yeah. That can go die. shove itself in the bin. I like <laughs> I like something that's physical and sturdy that actually gives me a reason to go, hey, this is worth extra money. Mm. It's not like pre order now or pre order Destiny two like they're doing and get this gun. I'm like, cool. And it's no. all di- and just in Destiny Two's case, it's like a different EB Games has something, JB Hi-Fi has something, the PlayStation Store has something, yes. the, X- the Xbox Marketplace has something. Like, oh my god, why? Ba- Battle.net has something, so oh my god, guys, just... Why? <laughs> like, that's five different pa- yeah. like five or six different places, and you're like, hey, I want all of this content, why can't I get it? I really like just getting like statues and figures and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, hey, with Hyrule Warriors Special Edition, we got a damn scarf, I love that scarf. <laughs> Such a good... I got a scarf, man. It's so good, and because it's physical, I can look at it and go, ah, I really like this scarf, instead of being like, hey, here's this throwaway gun in Destiny that's good up until level 20, yeah. and now and now it's gone, because endgame gear rules. Yeah. I remember you just like, <laughs> the horror warrior, you just like, rip open the box, look at the games, put the scarf on, walk out. <laughs> <laughs> I got my scarfs there. <laughs> I seen with Mario Plus Rabbids, you get like, the little, like, the... the the little, statue yeah, the statue of you know the rabbits yep I've seen them in EB Games today just the ones they're selling they, they look pretty cool yeah see stuff like that is fine yeah. I, I mean I'm not interested in the rabbit statue as at, like for myself mm. but for people that do care about that type of thing that's perfect because it's physical it's right in front of you and it costs you a little bit of extra money but it is a product mm. it's not something that can just be shoved into the game I'm not that interested in the Mario one but the Yoshi one looks really cool I don't know if, did you go down the I did not. I no, didn't. Uh. No, um, like again, again, I'm not really too interested in it. So it's kind mm. of they're pretty expensive though. They're sixty bucks standalone. Mm-hmm. So, but that's yeah. just figures in general, just expensive plastic. So yeah. you got to really like it. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. No, well, <laughs> oh well. Mm. It is weird that they are releasing Mario and this a week apart. It is. <laughs> it, it's, it's a shame too because I know that I'm going to be sitting there and I'm going to be stressing and I'm going to be like, I want both, but I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> and I need things. I need to pay for other things first, so I need to keep my patience and be like, "Hey, I'm gonna get both." Mm. What's What's your first preference over Mario Odyssey? And um, I think it's pretty obvious. It's Mario Odyssey. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. It's pretty obvious. I, but I, the I, thing is, is I like I like Musou games as well. But I already have a Musou game on my Switch. Yeah. So I I I'm not. I'm not 100% like oh I'm without Mosu Musou Mm. whatever Uh, so I can I can live without Fire Emblem Warriors in saying that though I really want Fire Emblem Warriors yeah it's just unfortunate that they're a week apart I feel that's a really dumb decision I wasn't feeling I was gonna I wasn't feeling like I was gonna pick up Warriors but I was watching a trailer and like the cutscenes and all the characters together I'm like oh nah fuck it I'll get this this looks pretty cool you said f- play Hyrule Warriors nah play Hyrule Warriors nah that's stuck on my way you now that's play Hyrule Warriors <laughs> that's exactly the same fucking thing except it's Zelda yeah I know <laughs> fucking play it I did I got like halfway through it that's good enough finish it <laughs> god damn it it was it's really good it's a really good Musou game. Oh, that... well, Bryce, maybe it's just not good enough, mate. In the Fire Emblem Warriors is going to be the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a really good Musou game that does a really, really good job of depicting the, the series it's melded with. It's going to be really, really good. Okay. So, sure, sure. You, you sh- even if you're not into Musou games, you're probably going to enjoy it because it's content of your favourite games. Fire Emblem looks freaking awesome. They should, they should do a Pokemon one. A Pokemon Musou game? Yeah, sure. They probably will one day, and it'll probably be really good. <laughs> you don't know. Just trying to run his Pikachu and... Yeah. Uh, Xenoblade devs hiring for new Final Fantasy action RPG. New Final Fantasy, I think, just mean fantasy. I did. I was thinking Final Fantasy from earlier. Just... <laughs> See, this is a good thing. Have you seen this? I have not seen the concept art. Yeah, so it looks like a... How do you describe that? Just like a, it looks pretty like stereotypical medieval. It's very m- medieval fantasy. Yeah. So it'd be interesting. I don't know. Be, like I don't know if this is going to be a new IP for them, for Nintendo or what. But 
As per a series job listing translated by Neo, Neo Gaff user Doc Rule, it appears that Nintendo owned studio is getting ready to create a new franchise. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, my first, my first thought is um, looking at the character and the concept art is it's just like immediately it's like it's old school Final Fantasy looking. Yeah. It really is old school Final Fantasy. So it's got like a like a sort of blurry red dragon up the top here and it's got a guy with a sword with his back <laughs> showing the camera. Yep, and the armor is very uh wall wall inspired, warrior of light inspired mm. sort of thing. It's different coloring, but like it's the same sort of concept of like it's a very harsh color on a light looking person. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I guess, I guess it's going to be Final Fantasy-esque. Maybe not, maybe not in gameplay style, but in general concept sense, that's what it looks like. Hmm. So, could be interesting, but I'm holding out for Xenoblade. (laughs) So, Xenoblade is on my mind primarily at the moment. So, when this, when this game decides to show itself, I'll, I'll be interested. But, in saying that, this is just a job listing. Yeah. Which means they've re- they've hardly started it and it probably won't be here for a couple of years. No, if yeah, probably longer than that even. Mm-hmm. But Monolith Soft, I don't know if they've got like two teams under that studio or whether it's just the one team. Be interesting to know whether they'll go to like a like they're going to start a new IP and that's going to be solely what they're doing or they're going to keep going with Xenoblade. Cuz it's it's not a huge seller, is it? In Japan, like I know it's not necessarily in the west here. But is it that much of a seller? Wait, Xenoblade? Yeah. I mean, I'm not, like it's a bigger seller, definitely, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure of the numbers. It's not a huge game for them, for Nintendo, so maybe they'll try. Well, it's not a huge game for Nintendo, which is a shame because I wish it was. Yeah. It's just it's th- it's that really good. That genre in, like, that genre in uh, general isn't that big. Sort of, you know, JRPG. Yeah, I guess. Because you've got most... like you've got like Final Fantasy and Persona, sort of, you know, getting there. But when when a lot of people think of JRPG nowadays, it's not Final Fantasy. <laughs> no, it's it's really strange, but it's not Final Fantasy. It's like games like Persona or Hyper Dimension Neptunia. <laughs> yeah, games like that because they're like. Yeah, like Nino Cooney and stuff Nino like that. Nino Cooney, yeah. even you know, it's just a stylistic anime esque thing. Mm. You know what I mean? And Final Fantasy is not that now, so people are kind of just like, oh, "This is a JRPG." Hmm. <laughs> then they think of JRPGs in general. It's like you know, it's probably not a, the best way to describe it. <laughs> yeah, it's like you could get a Hyper Dimension Neptunia, which is like very. Very lightly, almost Senran Kagura ish sometimes. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> so. That's what you, you know. want. And that game, That's that game want. also got friggin' announced. Did it? Well, oh, yeah. No. Did you not Did you not see it? No. It's a massage game on Nintendo Switch. Sweet. You have to, like. They had, like, this stage demo. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the creator standing there on stage and he's just like moving in a motion like this and on the screen in the background he's just like slapping the main character's leg for... is, is it touch screen or is it joy-con joy-con movement, movement. He's, oh he's yes he's actually got joy-cons like this he's just like it's and like... like on the screen there's these two hands just like slapping a leg so that movement you did <laughs> that was just moving your arms up and down just... no hang on where's the joy-con I'll give you an example oh well, well... Try and pass pass me that blue one there. Right, okay. right, right. So you're not going to be able to see this, but at least you'll get the context. Yeah, like, I, I he got was you. Like this. I'm trying to give context for the people listening. It's literally like an okay. Imagine a sausage. Oh yeah. Imagine when imagine you're it cooked, the skin has popped and it's sort of bent itself. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> okay. Close your eyes and imagine that. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's basically like <laughs> a bent up. I've got him now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, okay, so basically, it's like a slapping motion. What I'm doing is basically like a slapping motion. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Stop thinking about penis. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a slapping motion or whatever, but like, if you Google this shit, you'll be able to find it really quickly. Just just look at it after. There is a gif of it on the internet where people are just like, oh my god. So was this at Gamescom? 
No, it was not. It was Wasn't? before Gamescom. Okay. But it it is a, it is a um I hope that comes over here cuz I want to get some of that. It is a game all about massaging I believe her name is Asuka. Oh. And yeah. it, that is the only character you massage as far as I've heard. Oh, just gang up all in one girl, but fair enough. It's just like, hey, it's, she's like, hey, I want you to massage my butt cheeks, which will probably be a thing, by oh. the way. Oh, yeah. And you're like, slap, 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 slap. You're moving your Joy-Cons. You're feeling this vibration that's supposed to be, you know, they were doing that big old testing with water balloons, trying to get the right feel for breasts and legs. Water balloons for breasts. Do you not remember that? Come on, you have to remember that. They had... When they were talking about the Switch uh, about a month after uh, the pre-release conference... They were like, oh, we're also developing a Senra and Kaguro game. Mm. And they were talking about it or whatever. Then they had these people in lab coats playing around with water balloons and fake, fake titty gel or whatever. Mm. That stuff, the stuff that they actually put in when you have like fake, they were playing with that stuff. Right. It feels like this. And they're like, we're going to implement that into HD rumble. Oh, right. So now they're going to be putting leg slaps in the HD rumble and you're going to feel like fleshy leg slaps through your HD rumble. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> like, it makes no sense, but it's there. Okay, I want, I want that game. <laughs> Not necessarily just to sit in a dark room and just slap some butt cheeks, but it'd be fun to do on stream and stuff like that on Twitch, yeah. <laughs> yeah it'd be so strange. All right, speaking of uh, slaps and some butt cheeks, Bryce. So, Pokemon Gold and Silver is being released on the Virtual Console on 3DS later this month. Yes. And it's uh, getting... Later next month? Uh, September. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's September now. Just... It's, it's August. Don't forget about my birthday. Oh, I've, I've, my I've, already... birthday I've forgotten the bet. I've forgotten the bet your birthday. Ah. <laughs> no one cares. Anyway. I care, bros. Don't worry, mate. Oh. Um, they're basically doing a box edition for the download code. I don't know what else you get with it, apart from a piece of paper with the code, but... It... Nothing. It's pretty cool if you get a box. I want the box. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be the standard size GBC box, except it says Nintendo 3DS on the side. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, don't I guess. Get me wrong. <laughs> like, but I'll probably I'll probably get the download download code and mm. not worry about. Well, like I'll download it off the eShop and not worry about it. Yeah, because having those boxes, they're flimsy things. <laughs> it doesn't mm. really go anywhere. Yeah, I'll probably just download it unless it's easy to get. Like, you just go to EB Games and they've got it there but yeah even th- even then it'll probably be a couple bucks more so yeah probably so so yeah that's that's a thing yeah. well, there you go it's not 1998 anymore or um, is it no it's 2000 when these games come out now what about these eShop games you want to quickly run through here right. we so, need to talk about them because you've written them down I'm going to hold your switch like a baby alright hang on here we go father mode <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's a developer out there called Crunching Koala Brass. No, Crunching Koalas. And I was looking at Butcher and... Uh, was it Lich Spear on the Nintendo... Lich Spear. Yeah, so the uh, the Switch eShop. And we're like, uh, they're called Crunching Koalas. So they must be Australian. So I went, I went and done some research, Bryce. <laughs> oh, and okay. Bi- so do we have our answer about Crunching Koalas? So th- they're from Poland, right? Okay. They're not Australian. Gotcha. And I then decided to go and have a look at their website so why are you bastards called crunching koalas <laughs> you're not australian you're from poland oh god i remember this we looked at this we looked at this so they've got four reasons why they're called crunching koalas <laughs> games for everyone everyone loves koalas so yeah that's reason four so what we're going to do bro we're going to read <laughs> you i'll read one okay. you read one all right so you start you start off okay so reason number four is games for everyone <laughs> everyone loves koalas do you want me to read the whole passage? Oh, absolutely. One of the mission statements for our studio to make games for all those who need a break. This is this includes casual players, hard harder harder core. Oh, harder core gamers and even non-gamers. To put it simply, we want to make games that are designed for everyone. Since we want our games to be for everyone, we figured that we should put something everybody likes in our <laughs> studio name. And everybody does, loves koalas. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Does everyone love koalas? I don't know. Does half the world know about koalas? I mean... I mean, I think you would find... I, I would think you would find so many people that just want to skin them for their fur. I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> and people don't like drop bears. Everyone's afraid of drop bears. Oh, yeah. Essentially, yeah. the koala is where the drop bear originated from. 
Oh. Mm. All right, number three. We are passionate about what we do. <laughs> okay. Crunch is a term used in the video game industry uh, to reference working overtime. Nobody likes it, and in nobody any industry. <laughs> Continue though. Don't interrupt me, bros. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody really wants to do it, but sometimes it's just unavoidable. We are a group of individuals who are truly passionate about the games we design. We want our games to. <laughs> what, are you, what you're making faces? I don't know what's going on. We want our games to. Yeah, we want our games. Uh, uh, where am I? Uh, to as close as perfection uh, that they can possibly be. But at the same time, we are not industry veterans Ooh. and tend to underestimate the amount of work involved in these projects. <laughs> that is when the crunching starts. We crunch because we we want to, not because we have to. As a small independent studio, we thought this was a part this was part of ourselves worth sharing. Well, there you go. <laughs> tree tr- tree tops, a metaphor for fantasy worlds. <laughs> Wikipedia says koalas spend most of their time on the treetops, and they come to the ground just to climb another tree. Mm. <laughs> we intend to have all our games in a fantasy setting. We thought that sitting on the treetops high above the ground was a suitable metaphor for creating imaginary worlds. What? Similar to idioms, idioms such as to have your head in the clouds or to build castles in the air, the latter half of the phrase and only come to the ground to climb another tree represents completing a project and starting a new one. Uh, I guess... I mean, I, I will give him credit for that one. <laughs> I'll mm. give him credit for that one. That makes kind of sense as a metaphor. I, I guess. guess. And number one, Bryce, <laughs> is cheerful games, cheerful pet. <laughs> Another mission statement for our studio is to craft cheerful digital entertainment. In order to reflect this in our studio name, we wanted to choose a cheerful animal to be part of the name. Koalas were not our first choice. Though, <laughs> though we also thought about using what the hell is this animal? Capybaras. A capybara. What the hell is a capybara? A lot, it's got a picture that, of a capybara is, here. But that is a capybara. It's basically a. It's basically a wombat. It's, mm. Where's that? Where's that young animal from? Was a capybara from? Um, anyway, yeah. so using about, <laughs> about using capybaras or pandas, uh, we decided to stick with koalas since we fed. Feel. Since we feel pandas were a bit overused and the capybaras were already used by another independent gaming studio. <laughs> were they? <laughs> These were the f- four main reasons why we called why we are called crunching koalas. I feel like two of those reasons were unnecessary. Well, that's fair enough. I I really don't see a koala as a cheerful animal. They're quite slow, just go with the flow, just whatever. They're not cheerful. They're not cheerful. They they eat they eat eucalyptus leaves and they sleep. Mm. <laughs> that's what they do that's they're what not, they do I wouldn't say they're cheerful so yeah like, they're, not I, like, they're not like a dog no they're definitely not like a dog <laughs> so they had they had a game called Butcher which has um, been on Steam for a while it's it's been described as like a, two, a 2D doom it's like it's just like flat out just shooting on that gotcha and I noticed it it was recently removed from the upcoming uh, Switch games on the eShop uh-huh. which is weird so it's obviously had a delay, but there's another game. What was it called? What uh, was it called? Lit Spear. Oh, Licked Spear. Um, yeah, that looks interesting. It's like you're throwing like a a javel- Like it's really pretty and uh, colourful. That's why it got my attention. I remember that ad. There is no trailer on the Switch though, so I remember the trailer. We've watched the trailer somewhere. Mm, it's not on the Switch. No, oh. should be. We've watched it somewhere. I know we did. Yeah. Mm. Oh. So that, that looks interesting. It like it just grabbed my attention because I was like, oh, another an Australian developer. It, it and was not an Australian developer. <laughs> and they're from Poland, so cool. Thanks, crunching koalas. Thanks, crunching koalas. Thanks, crunchy koalas. And this game uh, has really caught my attention. More fight. More fight. This might have been the one you seen the trailer for. This was like the, um, like the first person shooter sort of. Oh look. yes, yes. Was that the one you yes, were thinking? Yes, I remember. Yes. So this is in Steam Early Access, and it comes out uh, the 21st of September. Right. On the eShop. Um, right. It's been delayed. It was meant to come out on the 7th. So okay. the same day as Destiny 2, 
pretty close to Destiny 2. Jeez. That's that's soon, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. The 7th or 6th Destiny 2. Of September? Yes. Shite. Okay. L- looking forward to it, actually. I'm going to jump into it. Oh, God. I think I'm probably buying it for PC, so... Bye-bye. Mm. Bye. 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 I'll enjoy my exclusive content over here, mate. <laughs> you could have your exclusive content, mate. I want my mouse and keyboard for a shooter. I don't even know what it is, but I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but like, I'm just reading the description off Steam. So it is a lovingly inspired. Oh, it is lovingly inspired by classics Metroid Prime, Ratchet and Clank, and Turok. So it's. I want to know how Ratchet and Clank fits in between those two. <laughs> But okay, don't know. Tur- Turok- collect, collect a lot of shit. <laughs> Turok and Prime, I can understand because they're both first-person shooters with mm. a very arcadey sort of. Now, bro, you just just read the description quickly. It sounds a lot like um, right? Okay, it re- sounds a lot like No Man's Sky. Your goal is to explore the galaxy, research plants and animals already, battle hostile entities, mm-hmm. and unravel a mystery surrounding a rare material called Morphite. Morphite is said to be a deep an enriching single player experience with both a story driven plot as well as an open ended player driven exploration and discovery wait what (laughs) oh I've read that sentence wrong moving on (laughs) the story of Morphite takes place in a far off future when humanity has long since populated the distant reaches of space the player takes on the role of Mara Kale a young woman residing on a space station and workshop under the care of her surrogate father Mr. Mason what starts as a simple exploratory mission to gather supplies to support their shop rapidly turns into a journey revealing Myra's unknown past and her relationship to a rare, coveted, and nearly extinct material called Morphite. In order to unlock and understand the mysteries of her past, Myra must travel to an undiscovered planet, uh, two undiscovered planets, roam uncharted sectors of space, and confront exotic creatures and locales in search of the, this Morphite. Aside from the main storyline, the worlds of Morphite are randomly generated. Yep. So. It does sound a lot like... No Man's Sky. Yeah. (laughs) But I feel like with No Man's Sky, they're like, you can play with everyone and go across the galaxy. This is just like the Metroid Prime scanning, adventuring, like you're just like I would probably be more interested in this game than I would No Man's Sky because No Man's Sky had promised way too much for something that they could not handle. Mm. so I'd probably be more interested in this I remember when after after No Man's Sky launched two players found each other but they could not see each other yeah because that wasn't in the game <laughs> because that wasn't in the game yeah but they weren't told that so features it's got a beautiful stylized low poly look environmental puzzle solving uh, scan creatures uh, to sell their information upgrade your ship and weapons Find various upgrades throughout your adventure. Huge bo- bosses to battle. Navigate the stars with easy, uh, easy to use uh, star map. Star map. Uh, random encounters aboard your ship. Real time space combat. Space trading. Resource collection and trading. Use random weapon and vehicles on uh, various planets. Upgrade your suit to survive harsher conditions. And fully voiced main storyline. Sounds good. So it's actually got a main storyline which No Man's Sky didn't. Yep. Sounds good. See, No Man's Sky, it actually didn't get my attention. No, at neither, all. neither me. Neither me. Mm. By that point, I was... Okay, so for anybody that is a fan of it, I, I know it's not like Minecraft, but that's exactly what it felt like to me, except in a big... Did you play it? I never actually... Space. No, I no. didn't bother. Not really. Mm. There's, there's, there's space simulators out there that are probably better than it in, like, Elite Dangerous. Yeah. Like... So really, I, I've played a bit of Elite Dangerous. I'm kind of iffy, iffy about Elite Dangerous as it is, so I don't think I'd enjoy No Man's. Mm. I remember looking at the first trailer and being like, "Whoa, what is this?" <laughs> but like after that, it just fell off the face of the earth. Mm. It's just, it's really interesting to bring up just for people who are looking for like a, a first person an exploration game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's going to be much shooting in it, but there's not many first person games on Switch. I can't really think of any at the moment. You think of one? I can't Gosh. Th- I can't think of one off the top of my head. Oh boy. I actually don't think there is. Yeah, so I think it's gonna be a good thing for the Switch. Is there a single first person game on the Switch right now? <sighs> Not that I've played anyway. No, I don't think there is. 
Mm. That's surprising. I, I can't think of a single one. So it's going to be but that's what Metro Prime's for. Yeah, mm. it's going to be awesome for like this studio to hopefully reach people who you know. It, it's going to be easily. It might be easily overlooked on Steam and that, but on Switch, it's going to be, you know, the only game of its kind. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. It looks really good. So I was looking at uh, who who makes this game. So on Steam, it says Crescent Moon Games. Right. So you're like, all right. You go to Twitter, and it's Blowfish Genius. You go, you go, you go, so you go to um, Crescent Moon Games, and it says, "All right, developer, we're five games." Okay, so you go to we're five games, and they say they're making the game. Oh, where's the? Other? Then you go to Blowfish Studios, and they're also making the game. <laughs> what? Because usually, like they have like. There's an indie studio and a publisher who's publishing it. Mm-hmm. I don't know who's the developer or the publisher. <laughs> Just from these twi- Twitter... Twitter buyers, they don't really say anything, yeah. Mm. Right. Oh, I don't know. So I'm, a bit, I'm a bit confused on that, but... Well, with that aside, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You reckon you'll get it? Mm, yeah, I'll probably invest Looking in it. it. Yeah. After this end of the year blowout with a bunch of other games... Gonna be like every every week. There's like a new thing coming to the eShop, which like you don't necessarily expect. Sometimes it just comes out. Sometimes it say it's just in the coming soon section. Right. So I think I think every week on the podcast, I'd like to bring some of these up if they're you know if they've been announced. Yeah, yeah. I think no that, reason to bring up indies. Indies always need their support. It doesn't matter how big or small. Mm, for sure. Yeah. Indie indie developers are the future of games. They are the future. They are the future. No, but seriously, these people go off to work to bigger companies and stuff. So, it's yeah. it's good to give them support. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It doesn't again. It doesn't matter if this is only reaching thirty people or whatever. You know, if one of you picks it up, it's more recognition for them, and mm. more than likely they deserve it for working so hard. Yeah, we've had Def Squared, Slime Chan, uh, Demambo, like. Uh, Gona, there's been heaps of stuff just come recently, and they're really and it's all really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. You played played uh, Death Square brief, uh, briefly on stream the other day. Mm, that's pretty, that was fun. <laughs> Had four yeah. of us just like yelling at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two girls who don't necessarily play games, but they're all enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's simple. You move around with the control stick, and you don't die. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing else to it. All right, Bryce. I reckon we might finish the episode there. Cut it quits. Cut it quits. Cut it quits. Bryce, chuck us your plugs before you what? leak. Uh, at at Bryce DeWitt on Twitter. Um, um, IV Revan on Twitch. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. Done. And, <laughs> and I'm iDruby on Twitch and Twitter. And be sure to follow the podcast on Twitch. Not not Twitch. I meant Twitter. At the House of Mario. The House of Mario. Yes. Like us on SoundCloud and iTunes, please. Yeah. Feel free to um, review us on both of those platforms. It helps the show a lot. We're, we're only a tiny little podcast. And if you have listened to the, you know an hour and 20 minutes of this show, thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. And, uh, Holy crap. If you like that hour and 20 minutes of us talking a bunch of shit, uh, pass, pass us on to other people. Yeah, yeah just put, put it in a letter and uh, send it to your mum. <laughs> and she can forward it to it. I don't know, fucking, I don't know what I'm she can forward it, to, forward it to a friend's dog <laughs> a friend's dog <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's go yeah alright alright as we do every week except for the ones we missed like last week every we, week we end the show with Nintendo Jukebox where we put some cool Nintendo tunes in your ears this week we're featuring a YouTube channel called Emu Emmy Emu Emmy Emu Emmy yeah uh, it says here she's a singer voice actress and gamer woo and she does lots of covers of um, songs. And uh, I've been listening to uh, a cover she's done of Endless Possibility for a fair while now. And uh, I'd like to share it. Okay. Let's, listen, let, let's, let's put it on the station. Let's put it on the station. Let's cue up the disc. Cue up the disc. Put it in the, put it in the tape deck. Quick eject the uh, Elton John we've had in there previously. We'll put this in. <laughs> the Elton John. Been doing some crocodile rocking. Alright guys, see you next week. I've forgotten about that song. (laughs) It's so good. Bye. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) This is 
Possibility.